so much for once again joining me for tea time look how clean that is have a little bit of misty morning and that is it straight misty morning today so good so good guys i hope you're joining me with your cup of tea or possibly a cup of coffee or maybe something harder as i always say depends on what part of the planet you're on so today we're going to have our cup of tea and just discuss some Let's say Sigma Recall. They don't call it a recall as of yet, but it will be a recall. And I want to get into it with you a little bit to see if you have this lens, if you do, what you need to do to see if your lens is affected. Um, but also talk about ghosting and lens flare to give you an idea of why it is what it is, how to reduce it, how to make more of it if you wanted to. But just use this as fodder to get into this discussion when it comes to ghosting or lens flare. So the newly announced Sigma 28 to 70 F 2.8 DG DN contemporary. All right, let's call it. From now on, I'm gonna call it the 28 to 70, the Sigma 28 to 70, that's it. The brand new one. It just was announced, I believe February, and it began shipping this month. Now that is for the L mount as well as the E mount. Well, Sigma says that it, they have found that this lens is starting to have some problems. And there's some quotes here that I want to let you know exactly what they're saying word for word so you get an idea of how Sigma is dealing with it, what they're saying about it, and what you need to do to kind of fix it. But before I get into it, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded my ebook as of yet, go check it out. 10 Tips at Making Tack Sharp Images. There's something there for everyone. It doesn't matter if you're a professional, a pro-am, or just simply an amateur. 10 tips of making tack sharp images, something for everyone. Go to jchristina.com forward slash ebook. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash ebook. Go grab it. It is free. Can't beat free, guys. So anyways, what does Sigma say? They say that this issue with their lens can lead to, quote, increased ghosting over time in certain shooting conditions. Keep that in mind. They also state that this falls short to their usual quote unquote high standards, which it does. Sigma has some really good lenses out there. For third party lenses, they're probably one of the best with Tamron, right? Now, they also state that they are acting as quickly as possible to rectify the situation and that they are. And that's why they're putting this out there early let's say, and they actually state that in just a minute. Now, they also said that they found that, quote, over time, there has been a deterioration of the lenses ghosting resistance. Now, what I find interesting here is that point of over time. This is a brand new lens that just came out, okay? There's a small number of units that were shipped already, a lot more overseas, but just a small number here in the US. So how many people have had this? That means that this problem is really a short period of time problem, not over a long period of time. So it is definitely a issue, let's say, because normally this stuff won't rear its head for a year down the road, not a month. So we'll see what ends up happening with that. Now they also state, quote, you can find the serial number printed on the side of the lens and also on the box. If your serial number is higher than, I'm gonna put the number right here, 5548834. Once again, 5548834, you can be assured it is not affected by the issue. So if your number is higher than this number, all right, you're not gonna have a problem. But if your number is this number or less, then we have a problem. Now, in the statement that they issued, they said that the issue has been identified early on, and they keep on saying this over and over, so that only a certain small subset of customers should be affected. 
They urge everyone who has already received the 28 to 70 f2.8 to see if it is one of the affected lenses. And they say this shouldn't be very many lenses because they only recently started shipping and only to very few markets. So like I said, not as much here in the US, more overseas. Now they also are quoted by saying, our optical engineers are working hard to identify and eradicate the underlying cause of the phenomena. And we expect to have this resolved within a month. A month guys, a month. They continue by saying, we will suspend all shipments of the applicable product until the cause of this matter has been identified. Once we know the cause, we will be in touch with the small number of affected customers to advise on whether we will repair the lens or replace it and how this process will work. Well, I'm going to guess they're going to most likely replace, not repair, this lens. And I'm going to get into that in just a second. Now, this Sigma 28 uh, to 70 f 2.8 was originally, let's say, announced um, in February. And it started shipping right around March 12th, I believe, this month, a few weeks back. And once again, it is the E mount as well as L mount. Um, so, this is what we know, this is what's going on, and I would say that if you have purchased this lens, then definitely look at that serial number to see what needs to be done. I would just stick it on the shelf, I wouldn't use it, and then you'll know that once they come out and say, this is what we're going to do, these need to be recalled, and we're gonna send you new ones, you can just pack it up, send it in, and they'll send you a new lens out. Simple as that. I'm really glad that Sigma is on it immediately, and they found that this is a problem right away. I think that that is really, really good. That means that the beta testers, whoever's out there using these lenses, have found this to be an issue quickly, all right? Probably within a couple of months of use. So we know that there is a problem. Now, what is this ghosting and flare anyways, or what causes it? Well, lens flare or ghosting typically is caused by dust accumulating on the inside of a lens. That's one way. Also dust or smears on the outside of a lens. That's a possibility. Or it could be dust or smears on a filter on the outside of the lens. Let's say an ND filter or a polarizing filter or any type of filter, you might have dust and smears or fingerprints. That would definitely cause flare. That would definitely cause ghosting or that milkiness in your image. Um, also, you could have smears, let's say, and dust on your image sensor. This happens a lot with mirrorless cameras. Why? Because there is nothing blocking the sensor when you pull off one of your lenses to snap another one on, it is exposed. So any dust and debris in the air goes right into the camera, just sucks it in like a magnet. And that's why your sensors get much dirtier quicker with mirrorless compared to a DSLR, for example. They both get dirty, but the mirrorless are notorious for getting dirty quicker. So, matter of fact, that's one of the reasons why I invented the Aurora Camera Care products. Because a lot of people were saying, wow, these things are getting dirty. What do, I, what do I do? And I tried a lot of different ones that I found on Amazon, and they were just like a mess. You would have to like figure out how many drops to clean your sensor, what was safe, what wasn't safe. They would send you a whole bunch of swabs and a little bottle of stuff. You don't even know what the stuff is. Is it just like sterilized, like some type of water, or is it actually cleaner, or what is it? Well, I came up with a system that you have a dry swab and you have a wet swab. And the wet swab has the exact amount of cleaner on it every single time. You use it, you throw it away, you use the dry, you throw that away and your sensor is perfectly clean, safe and just easy. No fuss, no muss, right? So that's one of the reasons why I did that. Well, so all of these things combined create lens flare. Now, a thing that we should note is usually a shorter focal length lens produces a, let's say, a light source that appears to be smaller, so you'll have less ghosting and flare, even if the lens isn't great, let's call it. Whereas the longer lenses, you'll end up with a lot more, generally. One of the things that some folks don't understand is as you have more and more 
elements inside of your lens, especially like telephoto lenses, okay? The more elements that you have in there, the more possibility you have for reflective light, right? Light reflecting and bouncing inside of the lens, causing lens flare, causing ghosting, all right? That's why prime lenses usually have less ghosting if they have a good protective coating on the outside and on the inside. Now, let's get into some of the preventative stuff, but let me just say something about this coating. Many of the lens manufacturers put an anti-reflective coating on the outside of the lens. And if you don't know it, some also put these anti-reflective coatings on the inside, which reduce sometimes light by 2%, 3%, 5%, sometimes specific light colors, hues to prevent it. So there's a lot of things that are going on with this anti-reflective stuff, not only on the outside, but on the inside of the lenses. Now, how do you prevent? One of the first things that you can do is purchase a lens that has this anti-reflective coating on it, just like the Sigma does. Well, for example, with Canon glass, almost all of their L glass, which is their professional glass, all has a coating on it to prevent lens flare or this ghosting from happening. So. Look at the lens that you're looking to purchase and see if it does have anti-reflective coating on it. If it doesn't, maybe you wanna to look to another lens. Also, what you could do is add a lens hood. Why is that beneficial? Because, for example, if you're shooting out in sunlight, well, if the light is coming in at a specific angle and starts bouncing around in your lens, you're gonna end up with lens flare and ghosting. Whereas if you have the hood on, it'll block it. Now, what you can also do is instead of using the standard hood that comes with that lens, you can get a oversized, larger lens hood aftermarket and use that instead. That works out really, really well. Also, if you don't have, let's say, a hood available, you don't have maybe the money to buy a hood for it, maybe it doesn't come with a hood, whatever the case might be, you can use your hat or you can use your hand or a flag of some kind to block the sun or the light from hitting the lens at that specific angle, which is causing the flare. Now, people will say, well, oh, I shoot inside, so I don't have to use a hood. Okay, well, sometimes that is not the case. It depends on the angle of the light. Perfect example is when I shoot TV, um, many times we use lens hoods, all right, and we use flags. Why? Because we build our lighting sets from the back forward. What that means is the background we light first exactly the way we want it, and then we start adding in our light for the guest and for the host and whatnot, okay? And as we add the light into it, Sometimes there is a light that needs to be in a specific location that will hit the main camera or a B cam or a C cam or whatever at a certain angle that we don't want that to happen. And at that point, we'll have to flag it or put a hood on or whatever. So sometimes you don't even need to be out in direct sunlight to get ghosting or flare if you're dealing with light coming in at a specific angle. And at that point, you just stop it from hitting the lens at that angle. Or once again, you have a professional piece of glass that has this anti-reflective nature to it, this coating to it. Well, it seems that Sigma's coating somehow is wearing away. So is it an internal coating that is no longer functioning properly? I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna guess, I'm just putting it out there, it's probably the exterior coating, all right? I don't know what it is, but it has obviously something to do with that. Um, so we'll see what ends up happening with it. They obviously know that there's a problem and going forward, they're going to see what they need to do to fix the problem. And once they have figured it out, they're going to let you know. So once again, if you're part of that small subset of people that have already got that lens, they're going to supposedly contact you with instructions on how to send it back and either them sending you out a new lens or them repairing your lens. I'm gonna guarantee you they're gonna send you out a new lens for this. Once again, it is a recall, but it's a very small subset recall to a small set of lenses that are out there in the wild. Whereas it wasn't a lens out there for a year or two when there's thousands of lenses they have to recall, they might only have to recall a few hundred, which is really good that they're on it immediately. 
I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about this with lens flare, how to prevent it. Some people might want lens flare. Back in the old days, we would sometimes use a filter on the front of a lens and then put Vaseline over the lens, over that filter, to get this just to get tons of flare and ghosting in this beauty image, all right? This is some of the things, some of the tricks that we would use. This was way back in the day. So some people really like lens flare, especially when it comes to cinematic stuff. You, I'm sure you've seen a lot of movies where you'll see lens flare come across the screen as the camera moves. Some of that's done in post-production because they like it. It's an aesthetic. But if you were just shooting regular photographs that are professional that you want to give to your client and you have big lens flare, big over their face, or so, that's a problem. Now, if you have something really small, you can always retouch it in post-production with a clone stamp or something like that. But you don't want to do that. Once again, there's a few things that you can do. Number one, make sure that you buy a piece of glass that has that anti-reflective coating on it. Number two, make sure that you use some type of flag or a hood or an oversized hood or whatever, that helps a lot. But number three, which definitely helps, is to keep your lens clean. On the inside, you can't clean it, but you can send it away for cleaning. But on the outside, make sure that the lens is clean or make sure that your filter that's screwed onto the front of your lens is also clean, inside and out. Very, very important. And finally, the internals. Make sure your sensor is perfectly clean is everything that gets stuck and smears and smudges and dust that goes on there, you're going to see them in post-production. When you look at a sky, for example, and you see smears and little dots and debris everywhere that you have to go and clone out. Clean the damn sensor. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have, please throw it a big thumbs up. That would be absolutely appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed as of yet. And click this little bell icon over here so when I come out with a new video or if I go live, you're notified of it immediately. And let's have this discussion down here in the comment area below this video. Any kind of tips or tricks that you have for lens flare, adding it or reducing it? throw them down here in the comment area. Also, when we're done talking down here, go to community.jchristina.com. Once again, community.jchristina.com. Don't forget, that is our creative Discord server. It is awesome. There's no trolls over there, just really smart people that are eager to help. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of photographers, videographers, tech heads, they're all over there. So go check it out, community.jchristina.com. Also, don't forget to pick up that ebook. It's free jchristina.com forward slash ebook. Also, if you want to help out the channel by contributing a dollar or two a month and becoming a member, click down here, the button that says join. Click that, you'll become a member. I'll be able to give you perks for joining and you'll be able to provide the channel with a dollar or two a month just to help out. And head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented over the years for you and me. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That would be awesome. And for getting to the end of this video, use promo code YT20 at checkout. Once again, YT20 at checkout, you'll get 20% off everything in your shopping cart. And if you don't want to pick stuff up over at jchristina.com, pick it up over at amazon.com. All my products are over there, as well as B&H Photo and Video. Go check them out. Really good guys over there also. Anyways, thank you so much for being here. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe and stay healthy.